Hello and welcome back to the big stage. We are underway at Euro 2020. In this show, we're going to be taking a quick look back at some of the games, focusing on the home nations, as well as some other key moments from the opening games, as well as then looking ahead to match day two. Now, joining me as ever is former England international Wayne Bridge and broadcaster Rory Jennings. Now, I want to start off with Wayne. I mean, how is it for you to finally get this tournament underway? Oh, I was buzzing, really excited. Um, obviously, more excited to see the England game, but yeah, great. Uh, you can feel the atmosphere everywhere now, uh, walking around the streets, people with flags out their cars and stuff. So, yeah, it's great. And how about you, Rory? What's the standout moment so far after the first round of games? I've, I've loved it. I think tournament football, international tournament football, is such a beautiful thing, isn't it? It really does feel special. I think, do you know, it was the. The clash between France and Germany, the heavyweight, you know, the uh, the two juggernauts going head to head. That was the moment when I think the tournament really burst alive. But I would also like to mention seeing thousands and thousands of fans in Budapest at the Hungary Portugal game. That was a special moment for me. Seeing them all together there, celebrating, cheering their team on. I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful sight. Absolutely. All right, Lars, let's get into it. They're going to focus on the England game to start with. Let's start our review of the first games of Euro 2020. So obviously England did get that opening win. Wayne, I want to get your initial impressions actually on the lineup that you saw. I mean, a lot of debate was about who would start at left back. I don't think you saw Kieran Trippier start there, did you? Uh, no, I didn't, to be honest. I think um, from what I've heard, he's gone for experience um, to go alongside Mings, um, which I can understand a little bit. Um, and I don't expect... he Look, he done well, but you didn't have that left footer who was going to overlap, put a cross in with his left or, or anything like that. But, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a really good lad, Trippier. He's a good talker. And I think he's literally gone for experience, talking and and help helping everyone out at the back. Um, but I expect Shaw Chilwell to definitely start soon. They, they, uh, for me, that they have to. You've got to have a left foot who's going to get down and put crosses into the box. You want to you want to go and win games as well. And I think it was it was just a safe bet for starting the tournament, and obviously Mings of his first start as well. I mean, how about for you, Rory, as well? I think you've you've mentioned Mings in the past. Maybe you're a bit surprised about his inclusion. Yeah, I I don't rate Mings at all, to be totally frank. I thought he had a brilliant game. I thought he covered himself in glory and made me look slightly foolish. However, I will say that I think he's a decent Premier League player, but he isn't an international player. And I think we can get Harry Maguire back playing, the better chance we have to proceed. And how about for the, the in terms of like the tactical layout of England, how did you think look at this, uh, Rory? What was your perspective on how England actually shaped up? I thought it was an interesting selection from Southgate. Obviously, the, the left-back berth was a weird one. I don't think anyone saw that coming. But I think that was probably just for one specific game, to nullify one specific threat. I doubt we'll see that again. Um, the thing that has obviously surprised everybody is Calvin Phillips. I was desperate for Jordan Henderson to find fitness and form. I thought that our entire uh, tournament aspirations were directly linked to Jordan Henderson finding proper fitness. And now, because of Calvin Phillips, I, I, find, I find it fairly incidental whether Jordan Henderson comes back. So I thought that that was, that was a very brave inclusion uh, from Southgate and not one that's obviously paid off. The, the debate now for me revolves actually around our match winner, Raheem Sterling. Because I feel like him scoring, the, him scoring the winner is actually a bit of a facade. I don't think he played well at all. Oh, we'll get uh, Wayne's reaction to that. What did you make of Sterling? Uh... Look, for me, he his record for England, you know, and the way he's played for England, I think he's come under a lot of flack. He's a he's a he's a good good player for me. Um, you know, he might not have had the best of seasons, but he's got so much quality. I think he's dangerous. I think you know, from the first few minutes, he he looked dangerous. There was a throw in they took, and and we were on the tack straight away. And I think it got to Foden. And he hit the post. Uh, for, for me, he's good. I think he's come under a lot of flack. And, you know, I, I hope he carries on this tournament and he, he proves a few people wrong and makes them pretty much 
shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it was the best. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all right. Do you know what, Rory? I did. Uh, sorry, I actually come in, so I never even heard what Rory said. I was uh, it cut out. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, worries, worries. David, David, David. No, 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 I, I think it's I think it's obviously true. Look, with with Sterling, I, I appreciate what he offers. I appreciate what he's done. For me, he's just not a better player and not in better form than Jack Greenish. Yeah, and that's, yes, I, I, that's I, I totally yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. For me, you know, with the game coming up, Jack Greenish, he's got he's got to be looking to to play. Yeah, but play both of them. Um, for me, definitely against Scotland. So I, I get what you're saying with Jack Grealish. For me, he he does deserve a chance. But it's, you know, sometime a manager will have a player that he really likes. And I think Sterling is just that player. You know, he obviously likes Trippier a lot as well because he's put him in at left back. So sometimes managers have that connection with player and they trust. I think it's a trust they have in each other as well. I think someone we can actually trust as well is Wayne and your prediction. You did have England to win by one. <laughs> Against Croatia, do you think the one goal yeah. win was a fair result in the end? Um, yeah, do you know what? I think everyone's got a little bit excited um, with with the result and the way the team played. Don't get me wrong, I thought they played well. They do, they done okay. But I don't think the, they're going to come up with a lot better opposition, I think. You know, Phillips obviously done well. Um, I just don't want to get too excited. You know, <laughs> I see an interview with Mount after the game and they big tell how well he played and I, and I think when you looked at his reaction he was a little bit like oh well you know we'll, we'll review the game for me that says you know I've done all right but I, I can do better and I, I think there is there's definitely still better to come from England. And I think one player that maybe stood out as well for underperforming was Harry Kane I think Rory I want to get your views on him you had him in our bet builder for him to score at any time what went wrong for Harry Kane? <laughs> everything really he didn't have a good game at all did he it just didn't quite go his way he missed a sitter a sitter certainly a sitter by his own standards um but i'm still backing harry kane 100 percent. i've seen some what i consider to be ludicrous suggestions people saying that maybe calvin phillips should start the next game maybe england would be a better team without harry kane for me that's utter drivel it's a conversation i actually find very difficult to even explore i'm so confident in harry kane that when we get to uh my suggestions a little bit later, you'll see uh, you'll see quite how in favour of Harry Kane I am. <laughs> and one player you also touched on there, Wayne, is also uh, Phil Foden. We've got him as our young player of the tournament. What did you make of his performance? Um, look, he had, he had moments. He definitely had moments. Um, I'm backing him still. Um, but like I said, England done OK. I think he's going to have more moments like he did in that game and come along regular, whether they change the formation a little bit. I think you need to get him on the ball more, whether that means he drops a little bit deeper. But just get him on the ball. You know, the, As soon as you get him on the way, he creates things and he's good at running with the ball as well. Um, I, there's definitely more to come from him, but he definitely showed glimpses of what he can do. And as we show there on screen, uh, Wayne, your best bet for the round is for Phil Foden to score at any time. Now, I was wanted to touch on, obviously, England's next opponents, Scotland, and their game against Czech Republic. Some, an amazing goal we saw. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into that with Rory. Um, but Wayne, is, in terms of actually as a player, I mean, how do you guys kind of react when that worldly goal goes in against you? I mean, can it be that demoralising? I, I think both goals were demoralising for Scotland in a way. I thought they were doing okay they were they were they were in the game um they definitely conceded the first at the wrong time then they came out and you know they're giving it a go and then you 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 get that goal and it's it is demoralizing but you know when you say how do you come back from that they're playing England and I'm telling you now Scotland always raise their game when they play England they they make it a fight at least um, so th they'll be fine bouncing back from that and th they'll be ready for this game don't you worry about that How about for you Rory what was your assessment of Scotland did you think they played bad or well what, what do you reckon I thought they were distinctly average I think they did exactly what you expect them to do they, they're they not a very good team on paper and they're not a very good team on grass I think when you've got somebody like Lyndon Dykes up front they, they're only going to be so good aren't they Steve who Look, I adore Steve Clark, obviously, for, for you know very obvious reasons. But I thought Steve Clark made fairly shoddy decisions. I think the players like Shea Adams should should start. He's, he's better than Lyndon Dykes. I think Billy Gilmore it would have been a brave move from Steve Clark, but Billy Gilmore would have given that midfield something else. 
But ultimately, Steve, uh, Steve Clark's Scotland got wallops. Czech were far too Czech Republic were far too good for them. That first goal, everybody talked about the second goal, but that first goal was was a glorious header. It, it's like a dying art. That I thought the way that he got up above Hanley between two defenders, steered it in. It's not an easy thing to do that at all. It takes a real expert finish to to steer it wide and marshal the way that he did. Um, I thought I thought that the Czech Republic were excellent, surprisingly good, but. Scotland did everything I anticipated them doing, which was nothing. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. Um, but also, I mean, how do you rank Croatia as well? I mean, what do you think they offered against England? Do you make anything of them? Mm, not much. Mm. Not much. No. no. You know, look, they've got, no, they've got no. players who look after the ball well. They tidy. But at one point, it was fairly, fairly widely agreed that the two sides that were going to progress were going to be England and Croatia. And then, you know, there'd be a tussle to see what happens after that. I now have kind of reassessed that. I think the Czech Republic are well capable of giving Croatia a real game and potentially beating them. So how do you think then it will actually shape up between Croatia and the Czech Republic when they meet next? I am going to go. I think that that one is going to be really delicately poised. I feel like it's going to be a draw which I think will suit the Czech Republic. I think they'll be happy enough with that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't think Croatia, the Croatia team that lost the World Cup final, they're a shadow of that team, aren't they? Yeah. The lack that you know they haven't got Rakitic, they haven't got Mandzukic, and it really does tell. Absolutely. You could see, you could see that that like that's why I think people have got a bit too excited with the England performance. That you know it's it's not the best Croatia team you've seen. The best part of their team is probably the midfield and our midfield coped with it. I wouldn't say easily, but they coped with them. So it's... Uh, what what me, do you it's, mean it's too excited? Who's too, exa- <laughs> too excited? I, do, look, I don't know. I, I, like, I like to get excited, but it's, you know, it's one game. And I'm telling you, the lads, the lads will love it. They would have loved that first game. They got the first win. They'll be full of confidence. But, you know, there would be... a. The fans will be singing it. It'll be coming home. The, the, the lads will have their feet firmly on the ground. <laughs> yeah. right, so I'm not getting yeah. carried away. It's always fine to get carried away. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, we'll take a quick look at the betting odds for England, Scotland. So obviously England are the heavy favourites. There's maybe not a lot of value in actually backing England specifically. Uh, but one thing I do want to bring up is our bet builder for the game. So we do have a combination of markets that we've chosen and are going to get some of our best predictions for this game. Uh, so we're going to pull that up for us now. So Wayne, you are going for England to win to nil. I think you've said, yeah, Scotland probably offer a little threat. Uh, myself, I'm going for England to win both halves. So obviously they need to win, be leading at half time, and also score more goals than Scotland in the second half for that bet to be a winner. And Rory, you are backing Harry Kane to get on the score sheet at last, <laughs> and that is a four to one shout <laughs> with Bet Three Six Five. I like that. I like that bet. Yeah, so that will adds up quite nicely. Yeah, that looks that does look good. I think we're just going to pull up the uh, the group in uh, for England's group now, just to show you where things stand currently. <clears throat> obviously, Czech Republic in front due to goal difference. I don't think we can read too much into that yet. The fact that England are going to put a load past Scotland should make England comfortable <laughs> group winners. Now, I just want to move on as well to Group A, and I want to talk about the other home nation involved. So, Wales. I just want to get your reaction, uh, Wayne, on how Wales performed. They snuck away with a draw against Switzerland. Uh, what did you make of them? They were okay. Um, it's... It's, it's going to be difficult for them, I think, um, to progress through um, because I think Turkey come up against such a good Italian side and I think they've got more to offer. I think they'll be firing up against Wales and they come up against them. Um, so I think it's going to be a difficult job for them. I think they've done okay. They need... <clears throat> they're, they're going to need special moments from Gareth Bale to just light up, light up the stage, I think, because... It's going to be a struggle for them. They were just okay for me. Yeah, but obviously coming back from behind though to actually get that draw, do you think that will give them a little bit of confidence going into the game against Turkey? I, the... <laughs> I th- I, look, they've, I've said they've always had good team spirit amongst their lads. I felt like you look at them, for me, they look like they've got good team spirit. But I think it is going to be difficult. I think Turkey, I think Turkey are going to do a lot better than what they're doing against Italy. Like I said, Italy are a great team and I just think it's going to be tough for them. Um, but they, they do need to get a result against them. They have to. 
If, they, yeah. if they're going to have any chance of qualifying, they've got to get a result. Absolutely. It's, it's actually finally poised in the betting to qualify. I think Wales were at even money. Turkey are just over evens as well. So it is finally balanced. Obviously, there's a lot that's going to rest on the outcome of this game. Uh, but uh, for you, Rory, I mean, any thoughts on Wales in particular? I think that they're going to be in real trouble against Turkey. I think that people were talking about Turkey in fairly too, in, in, you know, glowing terms, but I think that they were slightly too generous. People were saying the you know, dark horses for the tournament. They're not that. But they do have some borderline elite level players. You know, Yilmaz is, is an excellent player. And I think that, that Turkey, after the, what happened against Italy, they will need to bounce back. They'll need to show some resilience. And I think their quality will tell. I think that they're going to make light work of Wales. All right, that's a great shout. Um, so, by the way, if you are going to have your own predictions for the games, we do actually have a competition running on Betting Expert where you can win a share of £5,000 in prizes. And I've got a little video for you just to explain how that competition works. So here it is, how the predictor works on Betting Expert. Euro 2020 is here and to celebrate betting expert are giving you the chance to win cash prizes throughout the tournament. At the start of each round of fixtures, we'll publish the games that qualify for the predictor. Then all you need to do is predict the following things. So the game result, whether or not both teams will score, if there will be over or under two and a half goals and the total number of corners for the games. Points will then be awarded for each correct prediction that you make, five points for the result, three points for the both teams to score element, three points if you get over underline correct, and 10 points if you can predict the total corners correctly. We will then rank all entrants on a leaderboard and award prizes in the following way. The top ranked entrant at each stage will win £100, £50 will go to second and third will take home £25. There will also be prizes on offer for the top 10 overall entrants, including a juicy £500 top prize. Now it's completely free to enter, so just head on over to predictor.bettingexpert.com and good luck. And so now we're back to the big stage through the magic of technology. I've just had a haircut and changed the shirt. Um, but now we're going to move on to probably one of the most talked about uh, yeah, instances or things that happened in the opening round of games. That was, of course, in Copenhagen with the incident involving Christian Eriksen. Now, he has tweeted out or posted on Instagram that he is actually OK now. But it was, of course, a very scary moment. Uh, Wayne, I just want to get your views. Maybe you've not tried something similar, but you may have seen some of your teammates be injured badly before. Can you just talk about some of your experiences with that and how would the teams come back from such an incident? Look, I, I haven't come across anything quite like that, to be honest. Um, you know, there's obviously breaking of legs and, and stuff. Um, but, you know, for me, this is totally different. So, uh, obviously, like everyone else, so happy to see him stable and he's in the best place. But that, that would have affected... That's, uh, for me, I, I don't know how I would have dealt with that. You know, I, straight away, I'm, I'm thinking about his wife and his kids. And then it could have affected the players. It's how, how do they deal with it? I don't know how they're going to deal with it. It's it's a really difficult one to see how how the team then progresses from that. They're going to want to do it for him, obviously, and I'm sure he spoke to all of them. But it's a very very difficult situation. That it's, I I don't know how they can cope with that. The manager's obviously going to have a lot of talk with all of them. I'm sure they'll all get any kind of help they need. But it's it's very difficult for a team. I don't know how they're going to deal with it. To be honest, I'm really I'm just. Yeah, I'm, 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 I was lost for words with the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I actually had to cut off the feed from watching it. I couldn't watch it myself. Yeah, and, I uh, yeah, couldn't see it. It was a really scary moment. It was, it was so bad, yeah. Um, but Rory, you actually tipped up Denmark minus one. Of course, now we don't particularly <coughs> want to have losing bets, but I think in this instance, I mean, we kind of forget the fact that it was lost. I mean, all the Danish press, for instance, it was the biggest upset in Euro history with Finland winning at 11 to one, but... No one's mentioned it. No one's mentioned the fact that Denmark lost the game after it restarted. I mean, how do you think the players will react after that incident? Yeah, I mean, I think I totally understand why the football hasn't been mentioned because the football in that circumstance becomes totally insignificant, doesn't it? It becomes absolutely irrelevant regardless of the stage, regardless of the, regardless of the magnificence of the tournament. It's irrelevant. And I am surprised, actually, the game went ahead. Did the players opted into play? They were given the option. I think even Christian Eriksen gave the nod to bed to play. Um, but I, I mean, Wayne can probably shed more light than either of us, Joe. But 
do you think that the players should be put in that position to make that decision? Like, uh, sometimes you take responsibility, even if they're the most closely affected, sometimes you take responsibility away from people when they're traumatised, don't you? Yeah, Wayne, what's your view? Do you know, it's, 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 it's a really hard thing because I think every, everyone can be different. I think, you know, certain players want to go out there and, and win the game for him. Um, but, you know, it, that can affect people. You know, that can affect someone physically and mentally what happened that day. So it's, it's, a, it's really tough. And I didn't expect the game to go, go ahead um, at all. Um, you know, I've, I've seen lots of different people talk about it. So it's, I, I, I'm really hard. I can only say what it would be like, what I think it would be like for me personally. Um, and and I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to go go ahead and play probably, you know, at least give them the day or, or, or something. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it, it's a very difficult one. Um, you know, I've, I've obviously seen players have serious serious in, injuries and, and get taken off and, and football does carry on. But, you know, when it when it's someone's life, I just, uh, I think the, the players, you know, they're, 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 they're surrounding him, shielding him for cameras and, and things like that. I, it's, it's very difficult yeah. to watch. And so I, I don't know how they dealt with it, to be honest. They, they dealt yeah, with it very well, I think. For coming out and playing, all credit to them. Of course, yeah, they are going to be back in action. You know when the players... Go on, yeah, Ryan, sorry. totally. But you know, when, you know when the players when the players formed a shield, and the, and the players, bearing in mind it's their friend and teammate on the floor, they formed a shield and didn't look themselves. That shield is an obvious indicator to anybody watching the footage. We would rather you didn't watch this. We're forming a human shield. We're doing all we can mm. for you to avert your eyes, it, and we're averting yeah. our own. And yet yeah. we're still zooming you know, in on we're zooming in on the geezer on the floor. It's mental. Yeah, do you know? Do you know? It's it's. So it's hard to, but if I look at it in football terms, it could give them some extra fight. And, you know, they need a result. They do need a result. It could give them that extra bit of fight but to look at it on football terms. But it, it, sometimes it's very hard when you see what's happened to look at it in football terms. Well, that's it. I mean, you touched on there the next game. They've got Belgium, uh, who did actually look pretty strong. I mean, we can go now. I think we can move on to the actual game. Um, I know Christian has, yeah, he's posted on Instagram that he's okay, so we can go ahead. And look at the game itself. But Rory, I think you maybe mentioned that Belgium weren't so good. I mean, are you still thinking they may flop or are you quite impressed with their opening game? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they beat Russia, which I think they were always going to do. What they have, they have one of the best strikers in world football leading their line. So they're always a threat. They're always going to win games. But no, I didn't see anything in the Russia game to suggest they're better than I initially thought they would be. I think Roberto Martinez, average players like Vox and all, all the viral still around the team. Uh, I don't think Belgium are genuine contenders, but Lukaku's a fantastic football player and therefore they're going to win football matches. Yeah, I mean, Lukaku obviously getting the two <laughs> goals now into favourite for top goal scorer. Wayne, I mean, do you still think he's wor worthy favourite of being top goal scorer? <laughs> so you, you can't write him off, can you, and you look at what he's done. Um you know, I, I I don't write teams off as quickly as Rory. I guess as I was an ex player, <laughs> but yeah, I get what he's saying. For me, you know, it was a good win, but for me, Russia didn't look like a Russia team that you see a few years ago. I thought they looked leggy and tired. Um, so that, let let's see Belgium against better opposition and 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 take it from there. But yeah, I, I wouldn't write them off yet. But it was for me, it was wait wait it was football, a Russia team that, that never turned easier. up. Football's a lot easier to play, Wayne, from the Matthew Harden lower tier than it is <laughs> from left back. On oh, the pitch. I'm in, I'm in, <laughs> a, I'm in a few WhatsApp groups, and it's like everyone's a pundit, and I'm just like, yeah, I'll just leave it to the pundits. But no, I like yeah. it's good. It's did, good did, I like it. I like to hear people's opinions. It's just, I think it's it is it is a lot easier when you're a fan to uh, to to come up with those assumptions yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I like it. I like yeah, it. I yeah, like to hear it. Mate, I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, two teams. No, do, you know, do you know what? Oh, recently, on, I, recently, I ended up on the pitch, on the pitch in Stamford Bridge, and I did suddenly realise, like, there were times when I don't know, I'd watch somebody like cross, a, take a corner, and hit the first man, and I'd be fuming. I'd be like, say it was Florin Malouda or something. I'd be like, what are you doing, Florin? You, you realise how big bobbing. that pitch is, I, right? You realise how big the pitch is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I'm not sure I could do it. You know, yeah. if I did it like a golf shot, I'm not sure I could get there in two. 
You know, you do notice it in pictures. Certain pictures are longer, some are wider, depending on how the team wants to play. They, they're, they're big. They're a lot bigger than you think. Yeah, too right. Of course, after running around for that long as well, Rory, right? That's the other thing. The fitness yeah, side exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I know that's where I struggle. <laughs> Um, but yeah, two teams obviously looked really good. I mean, we talked about them before the tournament as well. France against Germany. Uh, Rory, you touched on it there about the fact that the this is where the tournament comes alive when you see players like Mbappe looking absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Wayne, I've got to ask you, I mean, how would you deal with a player like Mbappe? Kick him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got so much pace. It's, you know, if you get too Tiny. tight... You know, he just he getting behind you. It, it's very difficult. And France, are, you know, when France are defending, they are very dangerous because they've got him in the team. One ball and he's gone. And like he's literally gone. Um, but, you know, I have to give a shout out to Germany as well. Because like, I didn't think they were going to do that well against France. And they've done all right. You know, they held their own a little mm. bit. What I will say is... You know, I've 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 had a lot of hope for this guy, and I've spoke about it before in the Germany team was Timo, um, and I I can I can glad well not gladly, but I'm I'm starting to side with Rory now that it's it's just not happening, is it? I, I was I was just I had my my head in my hands, you know, my bet of him getting three goals, and just can't see it happening now. Um, sadly to say. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> there, there is time, but you know, just when he came on, it was it just didn't happen for him at all, did it? There's not time unless unless the tournament's going to last till mid November. There's not time. <laughs> uh, now, France, because, you know, actually, France. They were great. They, the they were great. Yeah. They just, I just, they, I don't think they were obviously comfortable-ish, but I think Germany put up an all right fight. Yeah, so now they are into the favourites. Uh, they are yeah standout favourites now for the overall tournament. Uh, Rory, I mean, can how would you go about stopping France if you could? I mean, where do you start? Uh, I, I have you no know, idea. I mean, they feel like a flawed position. Don't they? they feel a, a pity. I don't know how you nullify them. I think the the only thing you could do it would be so so risky. But I feel like you'd have to attack them. I think you know, players like maybe Kampembe or someone like that is vulnerable. I think Hugo Lloris is vulnerable, but there's no point in sitting back against a side like France because you could put you could put nine men behind the ball; they'll find a way through it. They'll, they're so dominant in the midfield. Pogba and Kante playing together is about as perfect in terms of in terms of balance and nuance as you're as you're going to get. So I think the, the best thing that if England end up playing France, I think we have to go through the jugular. Make it a make it a fight. They really attack them. Yeah, they've got they've got pace and power. That's they're strong. Um, what I wouldn't want to see if like if when we do play against them, if I'm right in the final, is don't play too defensive. Like you said, have you know, you've got the back four and maybe one defensive, but then go really attacking. Put it on them because um, you've got to. Because if you're two defenses, it's it's they're gonna they'll be too comfortable. You've got you've got to put it on them a little bit, like you say. But maybe not bite them like uh, Rudiger tried to do on Pogba. So if we call that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Elsewhere... do what you got to do, man. Do what oh you yeah, gotta maybe. Do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but elsewhere in Group F is obviously uh, Portugal. Um, they ended up beating Hungary. My bold prediction of Cristiano Ronaldo not scoring lasted all of 86 minutes. It went down. <laughs> Dubious penalty. I mean, they shouldn't have given that away either. I mean, I was gutted to see that. Um, but Rory, what's your take on the performance of Portugal? I thought they were average. I didn't think they played well at all. I think they got really lucky. It was a shame for Hungary because they crumbled, didn't they? They yeah. they were in it right until the end. They had that goal disallowed. That I, you know, if that had counted, I was so excited for that to stand. Uh, but no, Portugal three nil is very flattering. Uh, Hungary were well worth a draw, and it's I feel I feel sorry for them because they uh, the moment of the tournament for me on a footballing level at least was seeing that stadium full. It was such a glorious sight. So I felt very sorry for their fans. Yeah, absolutely. And also yes. passing over to Wayne. Oh, yeah, it'll take... yeah, I'm pretty much the same. You know, some people saying how great Portugal was and I think maybe they just look at the result. I, I don't think they were great. Obviously, like we say, Christian at Cristiano is always going to come up with the good. So I think, um, so. I, like I said, I, I didn't think they were that great, to be honest. I, th I think G Germany... You know, I've, I've got well from what I've seen of Germany. I think they'll have they'll have too much for Portugal. 
A very, very, very tight game. It'd be, it'd be, not too much. It'd be a very tight game. Um, but yeah, Portugal, if they were average, I think people are overexcited about them, to be honest. I mean, how much advantage do you think it is that Portugal now got points on the board? Germany obviously lost. I mean, how much will that play a factor? Germany have to go out and get a result, right? Yeah, I think I think the yeah, pressure's they... on, and it, you know you never want to play in that situation, do you? Points on the board, like it's like when you're chasing down a league. If you're chasing down somebody in the Premier League, you, you want the points on the board. You know, people games in hand count for nothing, in my opinion. What are your thoughts, Wayne? Um, it's it's a massive game. It is a massive game. I think, you know, Germany, they're so good in these competitions. Um, and I didn't expect them to do as well as what they did against France. So I, I just think they're going to step their game up a little bit. And I, th I think Portugal are going to find it very difficult. And it, it's, it's, it's a ve it could end up being a very... Very tight, tight between them two. Who goes through? And moving on, one other game I want to highlight is actually going back to your bold predictions from last week, Wayne, was uh, to get Ukraine or the draw in their game against Holland. Now that produced an absolute thriller. I mean, it was uh, over four and a half goals in the second half. Was at twenty-two to one. So not many people saw five goals being scored. Uh, but what did you make of that game? Did you manage to catch it? I watched bits of that game. I did watch bits again. Now I was. You know, it was. Well, they were very unlucky, to be honest. I thought um, Holland look don't look good at the back for me. Don't look very, very good at all. Um, and you know, uh, I thought they. I'm just not that impressed with them. I know people are. I'm just, I'm just mm -hmm. not really. Um, and like, like I, I just, I don't think they're they're going to go very far in the competition personally. Um, Depending who they, if, if they, I think they they go through the groups, but I think depending on who they end up coming up against, I, I think they're going to struggle. Yeah, obviously we are looking at just the second round of games in the group stage. So I am actually backing them to get a result against Austria and to do pretty nicely. I'm looking at Holland minus one. I feel like, yeah, they do score a lot of goals. Maybe they're a bit flaky at the back, but I think that Holland will be too strong for Austria. Uh, I don't know, Rory, do you have any uh, insight on Holland and what they, how far they could go? Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with Wayne, actually. I don't rate them especially highly. Look, they've obviously got to make some players. You know, Memphis Depay has been on form. Um, Wijnaldum looks fantastic when he when he plays for Holland. Seems to always be amongst the goals as well. But they aren't genuine contenders for the tournament for me. No, far, far from it, in fact. Noteworthy also, Rams. <laughs> and I think now we're going to move on to some of our bold predictions. So these are going to... Not the, the standard ones, but we got some, yeah, some outlandish <laughs> predictions from our experts. So for you, Wayne, you're going for both groups E games to actually finish as a draw. Uh, so that's the group involving Spain, I do believe. And also, Rory, you're going for Scotland to not score another goal in the tournament or not score at all. Uh, and I'm not also going for Spain. Goal. Won't not score <laughs> any goal in the tournament. And yeah, myself, I'm going for Spain to not score as well. I want to touch on Spain, actually. Uh, they had... I think it was over 900 passes in their draw with Sweden, um, but no goal threat, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, Wayne, what do you make of Spain? I think you did say they were going to flop. As well, yeah. Yeah. I did say they were going to flop and I thought they were pretty wasteful. And, you know, I've, I've gone for that bet just because I don't think any of them teams really have any firepower. Um, yeah, like I said, Spain... Spain, for me, just aren't good enough. They were a little bit wasteful, but they, they, they're not good enough at all. Um, and, you know, you got for Poland, you've got um, Lewin, Le, 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 Donsky up front, who, you know, he can score goals, but he, it's... I know he's not on himself, but he might as well be on himself for me. So, you know, I don't think any of the four teams that I picked have any strike power whatsoever. I want to give a shout-out to Rory as well for Sweden, uh, the guy Izak. Actually, it didn't maybe get on the score sheet, of course, but it did look pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, it looked oh, pretty mate, good yeah, breakout star, one, right? One bit of skill in the box was unbelievable. He had like, about three or four yeah. players around him. And, he, yeah, he, he looked good, to be fair. It was a good shout that he did look really good. Yeah, good player. Uh, so, we're also going to highlight some of our uh, treble of the round. So, we're going to pick that out for you now. So, these are some tips picked out from the betting expert community. Um, and also, so here you can see... 
Netherlands v Austria over two and a half goals. Sweden v Slovakia, Sweden to win. So perhaps Isaac will actually get on the score sheet there. And also France minus one and a half on the Asian handicap. So as mentioned, these are tips coming from our betting expert community of tipsters. Uh, all of the guys featured here do have proven track records of profit on betting expert. If you want to go and check out all the tips on betting expert, then head on over to the website. Now, I think uh, that's actually all we got time for for you, Wayne. Uh, I know you have to leave us at some point. So absolute pleasure to have you on board again. And we'll see you again very soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Good to see you, um, Wayne. Now, we're also going to move over to Rory, who's got something he wants to get off his chest. So once again, it's Rory's rant. Now, Rory, something you, we did touch on earlier in the show, but the goal against Scotland for the Czech Republic, you've got some thoughts on that one. I certainly do, Joe. I, look, firstly, I must get it on paper that I thought it was a great goal. It was a very good goal, something that we should celebrate, the ingenuity, the vision, the bravery to, to try. Uh, it's, it's up there. It's a good goal. But I have seen some nonsense that has been winding me up no end regarding this goal. I have seen a minimum of three articles in national press and countless tweets telling me that it was the best goal ever scored in the Euros. That is just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. When you think of some of the brilliance that we have seen over the years, it actually doesn't come close. It's a good goal. It's one that we should talk about and it's noteworthy of some conjecture and some love. But to put it in the same breath as what Marco Van Basten did in the final in 98 is ridiculous. To put it in the same breath as what Paul Gascoigne did to Colin Hendry and Andy Gorham is a disgrace. Davos Suka is fuming. Carol Poborski is fuming. I am fuming. There are countless better goals scored than six. It's an excellent goal. It's something that we should celebrate, but it's also something that will probably be goal of this tournament, but that's its level. Goal ever doesn't make the top five. I think that's a very impassioned uh, argument for that. But let us know in the comments below if you think that this goal is worthy of being one of the greatest ever. Personally, I agree with you, actually, Rory. I mean, the goalkeeper was miles out of his box. So, yeah, it wasn't that good. I mean, it was obviously very good, but not up there in terms of importance either. Um, but Rory, thanks a lot for your insight. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure having you on board and we'll see you again very soon on the big stage. Love it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks a lot. Now we're going to move on to our community section here on the big stage where we're going to highlight some of the top betting expert tipsters. So just a quick reminder over on bettingexpert.com, if you post your own predictions on the Euros, so any game involving the Euros, then you can actually stand a chance at winning some cash prizes. And right now we are, after the first round of games, going to pull up the leaderboard so you can see who is in contention for the top prizes. So running from the bottom, Gavinston with 93 units of profit, Perez Stevan as well, SBO bet, Fav bet, and our runaway leader at the moment, 135 units of profit is Debbie Tanti. So he is predicting some crazy outsiders. He's picked, got managed to find some winners, some anytime goal scorer bets as well I've seen on his profile. If you want to see exactly how he's doing, then be sure to check out bettingexpert.com for the next tips on that as well. And then be sure to enter in your own predictions as well. But that's it for this edition of The Big Stage. Thanks a lot for joining us. And as always, if you do place a bet, please gamble responsibly.